This is the uh, Prayer Revolution, and we are here every day. This is, I think yesterday we had episode 30, so we are marching forward into the future. And um, we started this little ditty just to give ourselves some morning prayer, um, because, you know, our quarantine was launching, and it was an uncertain time of crisis or confusion or uncertainty. And sometimes what we need most is uh, just a little words of comfort, just a little words of hope. And um, sometimes we, the best place to find those things is inside, in our own hearts. We get a little quiet or we, uh, we send a little note to, um, to our beloved Lord and check in. And uh, prayer is, as Vera always says, a universal language. It's beyond race, ethnicity, religion, belief, etc. cetera. It's, it's the individual soul's personal connection with God. Um, that's the meaning of the word yoga even. The word yoga means to unite or to connect. And so that connection is available through prayer. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to mean that we get down on our knees and lean over our bed and say, my dear Lord, please help me with. But it's just, sometimes it just can be just a remembrance. It can sometimes be a um, reminder of our dependency, of our connection, and that uh, whatever I'm trying to navigate, it's, I'm probably not going to figure it out in my own mind and thinking. I probably, I don't know, have you, has that ever worked for you, Vera? We're, we are inviting God into our life. We're inviting him in. And, and I'm, 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 trying to keep, I'm trying to keep that invitation open every moment of my existence. Yeah. I, I take that as a no. It's never worked for him. It's never worked for me. But uh, we, 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 we recognize that the real revolution is in our hearts. And so Vera Budger leads us in a prayer every morning. And then we have a conversation about what that means to us. And we hope that something is enlivening, inspiring, or helpful for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, if not, awesome. don't then keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Krishna, okay, I'm done. My intro is done. Thank All you. right, DJ. Thanks, buddy. Grateful to be with you guys this morning. And those of us um, that haven't prayed with us, we're asking for you to um, sit down in a comfortable seat, find a pause in your day and close your eyes and start to connect to your breath just feeling your inward and outward breath and start to get into a space of receiving that we're in a space right now of doing we've been active so far in our mornings doing different things now we're entering into that space of receiving and receiving grace receiving a connection with a higher power leaning into that believing that even when I'm alone, I'm still with someone. I'm still with the most important person in my life and with my higher power. In our prayer today, we pray, my Lord, please help us to respond with grace. That when I look at my life, I can see that so much is not in my control the weather, relationships, circumstances, whether something turns out the way that I want it to or not, help me to respond with love, with kindness, with renewed energy. Help me to recognize that my free will and my choice in life, it rests in how I respond to circumstances and help me to see whatever is taking place in my life, whether the positive uplifting experiences or the challenging experiences that will come, help me to see that my free will and my choice lies in how I respond. And help me to see all of those situations in my life are our gifts that you've brought into my life, no matter what they are. They're gifts to help bring me closer to you. They're gifts to help me on my journey as I walk closer to you, as I come back home, back to my eternal relationship with you. Help me to see that I have choice in how I respond in every moment of my life and help me to respond with my heart and my soul invested in it. Help me to respond with grace no matter what is taking place in my life, let me invite you into that experience. Whether it's the simple activities in my day-to-day -day life, 
whether it's a great challenge or a great success, no matter what it is, help me to invite you in and help me to respond as an offering of love to you. Lord, I ask you to please make us instruments of your grace today so that in all the circumstances that follow this prayer, we may bring you into those circumstances and we may be instruments of your love and your grace in whatever it is that needs to unfold, that we trust that your hand is there, that you're guiding us. And we pray and chant your names, the beautiful Maha Mantra in the Vedic tradition, calling out to you, please help us to keep you in our consciousness throughout today. And please help us to respond with grace in every moment of our life. Let this mantra infuse our consciousness and infuse our day today and help to remind us that you are always with us. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you for your ears, DJ, and your heart. I muted on Zoom. I've been muted on Zoom. I'm unmuted on Zoom now. So uh, thank you for your words, Fear. It's really beautiful to hear. Um, how you doing this morning? I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, it's kind of like when I think of where I'm investing my energy in my life, I think of where can I have the greatest impact, and and just um, I just flipped open um, a book on a, on a friend's bookshelf. It's it's um somebody mentioned this i can't remember where it was mentioned but man's search for meaning by victor yeah. frankel yeah maybe you mentioned it dg yeah and, and i just flipped it open and i you know i haven't really started reading it yet but i saw this um underlying section and and it really you know stuck out to me was forces beyond your control can take away everything you possess except one thing your freedom to choose how you'll, you'll respond to the situation. You cannot control what happens to you in life, but you can always control what you will feel and do about what happens to you. And so just reflecting on my own life and where am I putting my attention? Where am I putting my energy in my life? Am I putting my energy in places that I don't control? Mm. Am, am I getting you know hung up in some some situation that really is not up to me you know really it's out of my, i really have no idea how it's going to unfold i have no control over it you know to a large extent am i placing my fulfillment and am i placing my security in life in those places or am i placing it where i actually do have free will and and i recognize that i have free will and, and how i respond and victor frankel sums it up you know that how I respond to every situation, no matter what that situation is, how I respond to it, that's where my free will is. That's where my choice is. That's where fulfillment, that's where happiness, connection, and opportunity to invite our higher power into those experiences, that's where it rests. And so just to keep my consciousness, you know, um, yeah, keep it fixed and really where I can, I can have a transformative effect in my life. You know, keep it fixed in that space. And that's, uh, that's my meditation, you know, today, kind of coming into today, coming into this prayer session so far. Yeah, it's beautiful that, that um, there are so many things outside of my control and that a, oh, you could potentially say a wise person or a spiritually minded person would pause to think what are the things that are actually within my realm of control mm -hmm. and then even a little bit more self-awareness is how much of my anxiety worry stress energy is going towards those things that actually i don't have any control over mm -hmm. and that and that a certain even-mindedness or presence of mind would would warrant us to really ask that question mm -hmm. and that sometimes it's why I, th I think what i'm hearing more so is that 
it's, I don't even know necessarily what's within my control or not. I think that's a question that comes up often. It's like, is this, is this something within my realm of, is this within my realm of influence or not? I don't know. Is this my place or not? Should I say something or not? Should I do something or not? Should I step in or should I step out? You know, and it's like not even always, how do I even know? How, how do you know if something's within your realm of control? Yeah, I think that it's, uh, it's knowing what's in our realm of control is definitely is how we choose to respond, you know, is, is that so much is taking place in life that I don't control another person, a circumstance, you know, if I look at my day today, I have meetings today, I have, uh, you know, if I have a coaching session today, you know, that I could go into that and, and, and it's like, I have this preconceived idea of how it should be, you know, and if it doesn't happen like that, then all right, you know, now I'm, now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm out for the count, you know, I'm, I'm back in despair or, you know, sadness or, mm. or feeling that, you know, um, you know, did a bad job or whatever it is, you know, but it's like, okay, actually what's in my control in those circumstances? How am I showing up? What state of consciousness mm. am I in? You know, am I remember, am I bringing, am I inviting my higher power into those circumstances and recognizing that every person in the room, they have a connection with a higher power they're a pure spiritual being. I'm holding space for that. That's what I'm going to bring to the table. And that even if it's a disaster, right? A so-called disaster, even if nobody else responds to that, if no one else comes forward with that, I recognize like I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I can I'm, I'm, to bring that consciousness in that circumstance, in that situation, and trusting that whatever comes from it, whatever unfolds mm-hmm. from it, Okay, now again, I got to bring that consciousness. That was another test, you know, whether it's victory or defeat, you know, or it's, it's happiness or it's distress or it's heat or cold or whatever the duality could be that's coming that again, like I'm going to be tested. I'm going to be tested that, you know, is my happiness and the outcome of that situation or is my, is my happiness connection fulfillment and just showing up in God consciousness, showing up in a mood of service and yeah. again and again throughout life, bringing that to the table, no matter what's taking place, even if it's a very challenging situation, you know? Mm. And so, yeah, that's, that's, uh, you know, ra- rather than it, than it being, um, how do I know what to do in this circumstance and that circumstance? It's like, what am I, what's my intention? Like, what am I showing up with? Am I showing up to serve and am I showing up to, Hey God, I don't know what's best. I actually don't know what's best, you know, but I know that bringing you into the conversation and bringing you into the circumstance and the situation, I'm much more likely, much more likely to act in a way which is in alignment with your will. And that's all I'm trying to do. It's the most challenging thing that we're, we're trying to do on a spiritual path. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to show up in, in God consciousness and, I'm trying to show up and to trust that God's will is always unfolding in my life. And that is, that can be very challenging at times, but that's our, that's our attempt. That's what we're, we're working toward. It seems that anything that involves another person is outside my realm of control. (laughs) Anything in my life that involves anybody else is outside of my realm of control. (laughs) Um, And I think that, uh, um, I was, I was, as you were, as I was, th- I was thinking of, you know, w- when this, when this COVID pandemic first came out, there was, you know, this whole, it still is, but this idea of flattening the curve and they, there would be this, um, there'd be like these cartoons of like, like matches, like matchsticks all lined up in mm-hmm. a row. And then like you light one match and it lights the other, lights the other, lights the other, lights the other, and there's a whole line. And then one match kind of steps out and then the, the, the fire stops and it doesn't continue on to the rest of the matches, you know? Mm. So I was kind of like a, a, cart- a cartoon or illustration that was like, it, that was communicating how we can contribute to, the, to the, the stopping of the forward movement of the virus. It's like, hey, you know, do your part to socially distance and like you can help stop further. So I was thinking of that and I was thinking of that in kind of like the reverse order, like, you said, make me an instrument of your peace, which is a f- prayer of St. Francis, or sometimes make me a channel of your peace. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like the idea that I need to control this situation is a form of illusion. Mm-hmm. And that's the, the Sanskrit word for false identity is a humkar, which literally means I, a hum, car, and the doer. Like car, karma means action to do. Like a humkar, I am the doer. And that that's where things get really, really funky. You know what I mean? 
where I think that I need to control the situation. Because the thing is, sometimes it's like, like, like every, every vice has a virtue on the flip side. So a controlling nature is really just, I care. Mm -hmm. But when that sense of care gets um, bundled up with my ego and my lower nature, it turns into controlling, you know what I mean? You know, or perfectionism is a form of, you know, it's just like, I actually just want things to be done nicely. You know, mm -hmm. it's like every vice we have as a flip side of a virtue in disguise. And so like even a controlling, the wanting to control, the wanting to, to, to direct, it's, it's, it's on, a, on, a, on a pure level, it's coming from a place of, of care. But if I recognize that when I really care, I am not the doer here, that I am actually a channel, an instrument, of God's energy, which is flowing through this world, let me not block that. Mm -hmm. Let me not block that with my own misconceptions and ego. Let me actually, like those matches that are all lined up, like in the, if, if that fire is a COVID virus, you wanna step out and stop it. If that fire though is God's insight and direction and energy, love flowing in this world, then I wanna stand right in that and I wanna be that conduit, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I think that's how that's 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 why ego in Sanskrit um, um, there there is no there's a false ego but there is a real ego I do have an identity and in this world it's um, Bhakti Takur, Bhakti Saint says that that love for God in this world manifests as compassion for others mm. and so like I want to be a compassionate force in the world or other people's lives and that requires me that requires me to be deeply connected on a personal level. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's like, I see that my, my, my love, my love for God is expressed in my compassion for others. And my compassion for others is fueled by my connection with God. And the mm -hmm. two kind of like cycle and play into each other. Like if I want to, if I want to express love for God, I have to be able to express it in love and compassion for others. If I want to express love and compassion for others, I have to stay connected on a higher level because that's where I get my, I'm, I'm actually not offering myself. I'm offering something beyond me, but it's flowing through me. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, and how do we, how do we become conduits? Right. It's like, that's what, what I'm hearing you talk about right now is like, yeah, I want to be a conduit of love. Like anybody on zoom want to be a conduit of God's love and grace. Everyone's sure. yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's, that's it right there. We all, we want to be conduits of love and grace. Like we want to make a difference. We want to have a positive impact in the world. Like everybody's, you know, for the most part, I think, you know, everyone will, will, will opt in for that, you know, and how do we, how do we line up? You know, and I'm asking you that, did you, how do we, how do we line up our consciousness and how do we line up our, our life in such a way that we can, feel confident, you know, that yes, that, okay, God's will is unfolding. And, and, and I got to be a part of that. You know, I got to be a part of this, this uh, unfoldment. Um, I believe that I'm a believer that we find what we're looking for. Um, and that I believe, like, for example, if I'm looking for the faults or shortcomings of another person, I'll find them. Mm. And I believe that if I'm looking for the um, sincerity and beautiful qualities in another person, however big or small they may be, I believe I'll find them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so or there's sometimes it's kind of like, you know, like a where's Waldo kind of thing and you can't find, and then once you find Waldo, you can't not see him. Mm -hmm. You can't like not like, or like these eye spies, you know, you try to find these things. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. Mm -hmm. You can't like, you can't, oh, I, I, the elephant's right there. I never thought the elephant wasn't there, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that when we look for how God speaks in our life, I think we find it. Mm -hmm. I think if we're looking for ways, like, I think, I think there are, I think there are stories that we all have in our mind from that developed from a very early age and for many, many lifetimes, you know, that we, it, it's interesting how much then we, that, that we therefore transpose onto God. People let me down, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's family or whether it's in relationship, whether it's at work, whether it's the government, whether it's society, we develop this sense of like, things never work out for me. Mm. You know, something doesn't work out once and then it doesn't work out regularly. And we develop this kind of learned helplessness that things never work out. And therefore we kind of learn, we teach ourselves that like, God is not there for me. What's the point of even 
of even meditation or prayer or doing any of it. It doesn't work anyways, or maybe I do it begrudgingly. And so I think that we start to expect, we start to expect that things won't work out. We mm. start to expect that God's not listening. We start to expect that I'm on my own and we kind of perpetuate that self-fulfilling prophecy. So I think that by starting to recognize and rewrite that script and start to tell ourselves, and sometimes we can't tell ourselves we need other people to remind us, which is why we're here, which is why you're here. I appreciate it. But we need to remind ourselves that actually, no, it's, 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 it's God is in my life. And when I just start to, I was like, oh, like, like, like I've, I've had, the, I've had these, this, this situation in my life and in other people's lives where like I've had family or I've had friends or by myself where I just felt like I'm just, it's just me against the world. And mm. I'm totally alone. And sometimes like, even my closest friends, I feel like they're against me. But then when I look back on a period of life, I'm like, wow, there were so many people trying to help me. I just wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. I wasn't receiving it. I was, I was pushing people away mm. who were my best friends who were trying to help me. And I've had people push me away and I push people away who have my best interest in mind. And so I think that we can become that conduit when we start to look for the ways that God is trying to intersect with our life, whether mm -hmm. it's people or places or et cetera. And then I think that um, we start to open ourselves up mm -hmm. and I believe that God will reveal himself. I think, I think that, 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 that God is waiting there's, there's a purport, a commentary from Srila Prabhupada, and I can't, I'll have to look it up. But he says that um, Krishna is more eager to, for us to come back to the spiritual world than we can imagine. You know, and so I think that, I think that if we open ourselves up, we'll find it. Mm -hmm. we'll start to expect it. I love the analogy you gave, you know, that, uh, that when you're looking, you know, you, you got the where's Waldo or the I spy, you know, and, and when you're, when you're, you know, okay, I'm looking for God in my life. I'm looking for my higher power. I'm looking for divinity and everything that's unfolding. Mm. And you're, we're looking and we're looking and we're looking and, and, and then you find, you know, and then you see Waldo, right? It's like, you can't not see him on the page or once that, that secret has been revealed, it's like, it, it can, it can't be forgotten, you know? And, and so it's, that it's like those eyes, right? And I'm, I'm like, here, and as you're sharing, it's like, man, what eyes am I putting on? You know, exactly. Am, am, I, am I putting on the glasses of my limiting beliefs? And I'm putting on the glasses of, you know, the dysfunctional relationships I've had. So, you know, now I'm projecting that into my relationship with my higher power. Or am I actually saying, no, there is a loving, benevolent, mo divine mother and father that is just creating all, all circumstances in life for me to come back into that connection, come back into that, that relationship. And so to be able to keep those glasses on or, or to put them on right now and to really look like we, when we look at the sunrise and we're seeing, you know, a miracle unfolding or the sunset, or we're looking at the, just the, 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 the natural order of, of, of mother nature and the breath that we breathe and the trees providing that oxygen for us, whatever we're looking at, like to look at it with those divine eyes, like to actually like with enthusiasm, with eagerness, like, let me see you. Let me see you in every single circumstance. If I'm wearing those glasses, then, mm. okay, I'm going to start spotting. I'm going to start spotting, you know, Waldo. I'm going to start spotting God in every circumstance, in every exchange, in every experience. I'm going to start to spot him so much more throughout my life so mm. it's beautiful dg i was thinking of there's these two beautiful verses from the the sixth chapter of of the bhagavad gita um where krishna describes meditation the the sixth chapter of the bhagavad gita is known as dhyana yoga it's the yoga of vira's wife dhyana and so dhyana yoga or meditation and uh first this is 29 and 30 six chapter six verses 29 and 30 where Krishna says, a true yogi observes me and all beings and also sees every being in me. Indeed, the self-realized person sees me, the same Supreme Lord, everywhere. For one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I am never lost, nor is such a person lost to me. And then in the commentary, Srila Prabhupada writes, a person in Krishna consciousness and in God consciousness certainly sees Lord Krishna everywhere 
and he sees everything in Krishna. Such a person may appear to see all separate manifestations of the material nature, but in each and every instance, such a person is conscious of Krishna, knowing that everything is a manifestation of Krishna's energy. Nothing can exist without Krishna, and Krishna is the Lord of everything. This is the basic principle of Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is the development of love of Krishna, a position transcendental even to material nature. Hmm. What was it? Go for it, yeah. I was going to read the last sentence. At this stage of Krishna consciousness, beyond self-realization, the devotee becomes, becomes one with Krishna in the sense that Krishna becomes everything for the devotee and the devotee becomes full in loving Krishna. An intimate relationship between the Lord and the devotees then exists. Mm. Go ahead, you were going to say something? Yeah, I mean, I, I was, I was going to ask a question, but just, you know, reflecting what you were just sharing right now from the purport is that so much of our relationship with, with our higher power, our relationship with Krishna is to be able to, to not, um, not be swayed by the dualities of the material world. You know, it's like yeah. to, you know, to, once I enter into that consciousness of that's good, that's bad. I like that. Mm. I don't like that. Then we, we start to separate ourselves from God's energy, you know, and, and that as we're going into life and as we're experiencing life unfolding, it's taking, you know, so many things are happening that we don't have control over. I'm recognizing that as a part of a much bigger relationship, a much bigger plan. And, and, and it's, it takes, a, it takes an immense amount of faith. It takes an immense amount of trust, you know, to be able to lean into that, you know, to say, I'm going to keep loving, even though it's really challenging right now, because I'm choosing to keep seeing, you know, that, that uh, she's with me, that my divine mother is with me, my divine father is with me right now in this moment. Yeah. So I'm hearing that, you know, that that's such an important factor is not to, is to become equipoised, you know, is, is that equanimity is not to be swayed by the conditional happiness and distress that we're going to experience in this world in order to, in order to maintain that relationship and that connection. What were you taking? What, what inspired you to want to share those verses? Well, I just, it was, it was, it was, you know, we're talking about, you find what you're looking for. And it's like, you were asking, you asked the initial question, how do I become a conduit of like God's love and energy in the world? And I think that really, it's almost like, I don't, it's like, it's like, what do I need to do in order to become a conduit of God's love and energy in the world? And it's almost like, what do I need to not do? Mm. It's like, let me just like, let me just like, it's like, if there's a kink in a hose and water's coming, what do I need to do? It's like, I actually just need to return the hose to its natural position. Mm. It's kinked up. Just remove the knot. Mm. And so let me just remove, like we have, we have cataracts. We have spiritual cataracts that are just blocking that vision. Mm. But actually Krishna is everywhere. Actually God mm. is everywhere. Actually God is working through you every day. Mm. And God is working through other people in your life. Mm. But I just can't see it. Mm. And so I was thinking like one who sees me everywhere. Mm. Actually, like when I start to look, I'll actually start to see things that I never noticed. And so the, this last stage part of the commentary I was thinking says, Lord Krishna never disappears from the sight of the devotee, nor does the devotee ever lose sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so as you were kind of saying, it's like, what glasses am I putting on? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there are certain, like, you know what I mean? You need to put in like, like, like night goggles or night vision or like 3D glasses or certain glasses you need to put on in order to see things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or there, there's so much light, like whatever we see is because of light. We can see there's visible light, but on the spectrum of light, there's so many other light waves, you know, there's gamma rays, there's X rays, there's ultraviolet rays, there's radio waves. Radio waves are not, you know, radio here, but actually light waves, you know, mm. Only way, we can't see them, mm. but with special equipment, you can see them. Mm. You know what I mean, but with our eyes, we can only see a very small spectrum of light known as visible light. Mm. And so I think it's as you're in the morning, it's like, what glasses am I going to put on today? Mm. Am I going to put on the glasses? Like nothing works out. Everything's against me. Everyone's a jerk. You mm. know what I mean? Um, you know, I'm just expecting things to go wrong. Or am I going to put on the glasses of, you know what, like, I'm going to, I'm going to put on um, a divine vision today. Mm. And it's not like I'm making stuff up. I'm just going to be like in some illusion, but I'm, it's actually there. The mm. gamma rays and the x-rays and the ultraviolet rays are actually there. You just don't mm. have the equipment to see them. Mm. And so let me, let me equip myself to see them. And my mm. spiritual practice is what unkinks the hose in the knots of my heart 
mm. because it's so twined up with just material misconceptions and desires and people say things, you know, people, the, the worst thing we can do to them is people tell me stuff about myself and I believe it. Mm. You're a lousy piece of crap. I believe it. You're fat. You're ugly. You're stupid. You're a failure. And I believe it. Or you're the greatest person in the world. You're so handsome. You're so beautiful. You're so smart. You're so intelligent. And I believe that too. And both of them contribute to a false sense of identity of who I am in the material world. Actually, I'm neither of those things. I'm just simply a vessel of God's love in the world. And when I open myself up to that vessel, I experience it myself and I experience a greater joy than it would in any of those other things. And so it's like, let me not lose sight. Let me put those glasses on mm. and let me strap them on tight because it's a wild ride in the material world and they're likely going to fall off. And so it's like, you know, you have those roller coasters, you know, you know, I have, I, I go to, I'm from California. So I went to Disneyland a lot. We have yearly passes to go to Disneyland. Even when my wife and I go visit, we go to Disneyland and there's this ride, it's called Thunder Mountain. It's like this train ride through this mountain. You know, it's like this fast ride. It's like, keep your hands and arms inside. This year's the wildest ride in the wilderness. You know, they say mm. that before every time. And as a little kid, it's fun. So anyway, I think that's the material world. It's like, keep your hands and arms inside at all time. Hold on to your glasses because this year's the wildest ride in the wilderness. You know, that's yeah. the material world. And so our glasses are going to fall off if we don't keep them. So that's my story. I've talked enough and finish us off here. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm appreciate, appreciating it. You know, and you, you using that analogy of the, the hose with the kink in it or the cataracts in the eye and then, and then touching on our spiritual practice that, you know, our spiritual practice of prayer, of, you know, chanting the names of the divine, of, you know, going deep into those, meditating on the names of the divine, reading spiritual scriptures and, and being involved in discussions where we're, we're putting spiritual life in the center, putting God in the center. These are all methods for helping to cure the cataracts so that yes. we can have that divine vision, you know, and, and it's actually so simple in a spiritual life. Well, okay. The process is actually so simple. And like you said, it's a wild ride. So let's, let's gear up, you know, we, we don't know what's around the corner. So let's, let's gear up for this wild ride and keep and, and as much as possible let's keep those glasses on. So we can, uh, we can keep seeing God through no matter what is taking place in our life. We can keep seeing Krishna and, and bringing, you know, that, that relationship more and more to the forefront. And so yeah. just thinking of, uh, yeah, all of those of us that are online right now, those of us that may or may not have spiritual practice that what we're doing right now, you know, when it comes to like, actually just the practical application of how do I start to clean those cataracts out of my eyes? How do I start to unkink the hose and come back into my, my nature of a pure lover of God and a pure lover of all, all beings on this planet is um, what's prescribed through so many different traditions and so many different religions and faiths is the, to call out the names of the divine and, and that, that they are available, you know, different names through different times and traditions, but the sincerity of our heart calling out these sacred names has that purifying cleansing effect cleanses our mind, cleanses our heart, our consciousness, and cleanses the cataracts from our eyes so we can see clearly, see, we can see truth clearly. Beautiful. See God, see God, God's hand moving us and Let's moving everything. Let's see it. It's Lord, so cool. does, you, does your little boy know how to do this? Can he do this? Can he put on his glasses? Can you do that for me, little buddy? Let's see. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you for joining us, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna stop embarrassing you, Vera. Um, thank you all so much for joining. Thank you, Laura, for being here. Her little, her little, little boy is with us, and uh, there's children in the hearts of all of us that need to laugh sometimes, and we're here to laugh, and we're here to pray, and we're here to make sure we put the glasses back on every day. Um, and uh, please join us every day. We're here every day, nine o'clock to nine thirty Eastern time, uh, where we um, say a prayer together. We bring the mood of prayer into our everyday life, and we discuss what it means to live a life of prayer. Not simply to have it be part of a life, but to live a life of prayer, to live a life of connection, to never feel that loneliness that I'm disconnected to, as Krishna told Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, to see me everywhere and to be seen by me everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so um, we love you guys. We're super, super grateful. Um, please check bhaktisandra.org slash online to check all of our online offerings, all of our other podcasts, all of our courses and training. Um, this week, if anybody wants to join me, on Thursday, I'm doing a Kishore Chandra and I are doing a uh, India pilgrimage info session. We go to in, we're, we're going to India in, in the fall for the first time. 
Um, and we'd love to have you. As of right now, it is not canceled. And after all this is over, you might want to get out and get away. We're going to India in the fall, and we'd love to have you. It's this Thursday. There's an info session. You could sign up online or message me personally. We'll be sharing what happens in an India pilgrimage. It is a pilgrimage. It's you're living a life of prayer for two weeks straight. We'd love to have you. We'll also be sharing and uh, Veer Budra and his good wife, Diana lead a trip every January. It's a wonderful time to kind of put ourselves in that immersive, prayerful culture. Um, so please join us for that info session this week. We also have an info session for our online YTT happening. Check BuckleyCenter.org slash online. And uh, we love you so much and look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tony, for being here, Papa Tony. Thanks, Julie, Bryn, Pat, Laura, all of us online. Um, Stay well, stay safe, and we will see you tomorrow. Adibo. Take care, Adibo. guys. Bye-bye.